Hello. So, although I am, have been a mixed bag recently, I will say that I, like a dog on a bone, I have been all about tending to my point of attraction. It's an easy way to look at it, isn't it? The easiest way to look at it. It gives me the confidence that I know I'm doing the work. Before you go further, we just want to stick something in here just to lay a really good basis for what's coming next. So tending to your point of attraction means feeling as best you can, like you're going to feel when what you want manifests, not like how you feel when you don't think it's going to, not like how you feel when you're worried that it hasn't come yet, not like how you feel when you wonder why it's working for that one and that one and not for you. In other words, feel how you're going to feel when it comes. So it's about but well, before we tell you exactly what it's about, we want to tell you what it's not about. It's not about you maneuvering things into place. It's not about you wrestling it to the ground and killing it or getting your way by demands and focus and willpower and determination. It's not about you willing an event into pleasing you so that you can be pleased. It's about being pleased so that cooperative components to being pleased can come to you. Can you feel that distinction? Good. If you heard that, you're home free. So I have been in a context shift, which has, a, which has produced some activation of desire. It's produced an awareness of a mixed bag, which I'm not used to feeling. I'm used to feeling in such a high frequency. And so... So what do you think stirred this up? My, the, my shift in context. So I've, I'm moving from, or I have moved from decades of form in the corporate world as an earner to early retirement package. Here's 46 weeks of double your pay. So then I had a segment of Yahoo, fun, and, pa and then, then panic. <laughs> we exaggerated a little. And then Anyway, so it's been, and I've had to navigate my discomfort in taking the early retirement. Well, we know that. And everything you're saying is right. And we really, 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 really adore you, but blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and we know it feels like it needs some splaining. We know that it does. Okay. No, but we, I've heard this. We just want to stick this one thing in, and then off we'll go again. When you look out into the universe at large, and you see wanted and unwanted or you look into your world at large and you see wanted and unwanted or into your government or into politics or into anything when you look into your immediate environment into your household into a particular person whatever it is you're looking at no matter how vast or micro or macro it is there are things that you want to be a match to and things that you don't want to be a match to. Things that you are a match to and things that you aren't a match to. And the law of attraction never gets it wrong. The law of attraction always is matching you. In fact, do you know, that's why you try so hard to get others to get you. Because you are like born matchers. You want to fit in, you want to be understood. And that's not a bad thing. It's because you can feel when you calibrate into alignment with something. And it feels good to calibrate into alignment with your desire. So the other day, Esther was contemplating something. It was something that had happened that mattered, that involved other people. And somebody had not so much made a mistake as much as been uninformed and not as thorough and it caused a disruption in something that really matters to Esther and so she set out looking for matches in that trying to make herself feel better about something she didn't feel that good about well that's not what we're talking about here that's really going about it the hard way that's you trying to be the law of attraction so then she thought okay I got this I got this I got this okay so she looked at the person who had done the big screw-up to find matches and 
we said to her that's still trying to be the law of attraction that's still trying to change something that's trying to affect a result in order to elicit an emotion that's backwards we said to Esther all you got to do is look somewhere in your world at something that you already feel good when you look at it anywhere all you got to do is be a match to something that feels good be a match to anything that feels good that's not being the law of attraction that's being a cooperative component to things that feel good which makes you a vibrational match to things that feel good which gives the law of attraction which it doesn't need your permission because it's always matching you up but it's going to get you the results the law of attraction is going to match you the law of attraction is going to match you the law of attraction is going to match you the law of attraction is going to match you and it is never we love you so much it is never someone else's fault it is always your attraction you're either letting what you want in or you're not letting what you want in and we know that sucks it sucks so bad because it feels like you don't have control about what others do and what others do affects you but you do have control over your point of attraction which affects everything that has anything to do with you all you want to do is tend to your point of attraction which means just don't do that thing that stops the good stuff from coming that's all you got to do just don't do that stuff Jesus said turn the other cheek and that's exactly what he was talking about when someone is feeling like they're a victim or seeing you as one do not hold that as your object of attention don't put that pot on the flame to bring to a boil don't prove things you don't want you prove whatever you think about when Esther first realized that she had us flowing through her her first thought was oh good now I can tell when people are lying to me and we said a better way of saying that is do they believe what they're saying because a lot of people aren't deliberately deceiving they're just expressing what they believe to be and then after a little while Esther began to settle into her realization that what her relationship with Abraham the advantage to herself and to others really was is that she would understand how it is that things come about that she would understand it cleared up the confusion and so one day Jerry Esther will always remember this moment in time he sat with his notebook he had endless questions and he sat with his notebook and he said to us Abraham there are laws of physics in our physical world are there other laws that would be good for us to know and we said most significantly the law of attraction what's that Jerry said that says that that which is likened to itself is drawn it's like birds of a feather flock together it's like you get what you think about Jerry settled into that question he didn't really grasp it like you all are right now but he liked the logic of it he liked the sureness of it and then he said what other laws we said um the law of deliberate creation hmm what does that mean well that means that you get what you focus on so when you focus deliberately and steadily that then the law of attraction responds to that focus and it demonstrates or manifests in your experience and Jerry said all right any more and we said the law of allowing what's that well when you ask for anything it is given but you've got to figure out how to allow your vibrational frequency to match what you're asking for you can't think in contradiction and allow it in and Jerry said doesn't seem like there's anything else we'd ever need to know and we said we call it step one two three ask source gives it you gotta let it in and it is that simple so you want to know when you're not letting it in every time you feel negative emotion do you want to know when you've asked for something every time you feel negative emotion 
because if you hadn't asked and your inner being wasn't all over it then you wouldn't feel any negative emotion when you are focused in contradiction to it because there would be no tug of war going on within you in other words just this simple understanding will bring you into understanding exactly what non-physical is exactly how non-physical feels about you it will lead you to understanding why you're here in this physical body you came for the variety to inspire you to your personal idea understanding that once that inspiration happened once that knowing what you don't want knowing what you do want happened that you were deserving and worthy and that it would come as demonstration of your worthiness and demonstration that you are a creator you see so it is simple isn't it doesn't it seem completely simple right now and what did you sit down to ask us a little bit ago well I just wanted to talk about the box and the empty I'm yeah it's... children all over the world are fed and people that don't feel good feel better and I'm in the right place at the right time where I can be of value to others and I'm aware of the way I feel so that I'm coming from a place of full empowerment and when I hold someone as my object of attention they are benefited by my gaze and no one will ever be diminished as a result of knowing me because I will focus into the fullness of who I am in other words there's a lot of things you can put in your box that won't step on anybody's toes if somebody says what's that box you say it's my creation box and they say what's in it you say everything I want and they say it's pretty greedy isn't it you're greedy aren't you and you say yeah <laughs> and they'll say what's in there and I say it is my desire that you live happily ever after my desire that you thrive I put that in there it's my desire that you feel happy that your leg stops hurting that you restore yourself to well-being in other words because your vortex that creation box that vortex does not just include things that you want for you anytime that you have interaction with anyone you launch rockets of desires about them that's why it disappoints you so much when they don't thrive because you want them to so much mm -hmm. You say, yeah, helpful? Yes. Really Thank good. you so much. Really good. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.